Hello, so this video is going to be about Chapter 12, Inventory Management Models. Uh, we'll focus, this first part will be all on economic order quantity, and then we'll have Part 2 will be on the reorder point. So, as you might have guessed from the name of the chapter, um, all of the discussion will be around inventory with respect to how much should you have on hand and when is a good time to reorder. So in this section here we're going to be talking about inventory management. I'm going to start out sort of explaining why we even have inventory and what it functions as in an organization and stuff like that. Then we'll move into actually computing various inventory levels. So first just thinking about inventory, let's just talk a little bit about inventory. Why do we even have it? So firms use inventory to provide whatever it is the customers want to the customers. And in many ways, striking the balance of how much inventory to have can be a really, really important issue with companies. You want to have enough inventory to meet the demand of people coming in, but you don't want to have so much inventory that you end up with leftover inventory at the end of the season or at the end of the push for that particular product. So ultimately what you're trying to do is sort of strike a balance between this huge investment in inventory and some sort of customer service. Many industries have pretty complex equations here because suppliers have a vested interest in providing unique products. Take tires for example. There are thousands of different types of tires. If a tire store was to keep every type of tire in stock that every vehicle could possibly want, you know, the, it would be an endless warehouse. Instead, what tire companies try to do is strike a balance between what customers want, what they get a regular need for, and um, the sizes and, and the quantities so that they can meet a large amount of demand, but not necessarily every single person that walks in the door. That said, um, the basic objective of inventory management is to essentially strike that balance. While it sounds very simple, it, it can be, of course, complex. Um, in the best scenario, tires are, is, a, is a nightmare because they're both large, heavy, and a large investment. Basically, it is, rests on these two fundamental pieces, and that is how much to order and when to order. So when we place an order, do we place a lot, a little, how much, and when, how often, you know, do we place this order? So how much and then when. The how much to order we call an economic order quantity model and then when to order is the reorder point and we'll talk a lot about both of those models. The models that we're going to talk about today all have to do with um, items that have an independent demand. These are items that like tires they are not necessarily a function of the end item. Of course, some tires are a function of the end item, but we would be talking more about like tire warehouse as opposed to um, the Toyota production plant. Okay, so now let's move on to the functions of inventory. So the obvious function of inventory is to meet the demand of the customer. Um, but they, but inventory also provides some advantages to the business as well. One thing they do is enable the business a way to decouple demand fluctuation. So we might have a really busy day one day and then not so busy the next day. So inventory management enables us to uh, have that extra just in case we have a run on something. Again, you have to have the balance. You can't have too much or too little. Um, it also enables us to take advantage of discounts. So we might be able to get our tires are discounted amount right now well oil is less expensive tires ought to be less expensive so we might want to stock up on tires right now for a tire warehouse and it allows us to hedge against stock out if we think maybe there might be a shortage of something in the future we can um, 
get a whole bunch of it now so that later we uh, will have what we need. Southwest Airlines is a great example of this. A number of years ago, they bought a whole bunch of uh, jet fuel, which enabled them to keep their prices lower than many other um, airlines for a while because they had purchased so much jet fuel in, in advance that then they could really take advantage of it um, in the years, many years to come, like for 10 years or so. Okay, the next uh, bullet point we got here is the types of demand. So basically, we just have the two types. I think I mentioned them, independent and dependent. And we're interested in this um, chapter in items with independent demand. And dependent demand items will be in chapter 14. We'll talk about those. And the last uh, bullet on the slide here is types of inventory. Essentially, there are four types of inventory. We're going to have raw material inventory. I mean, depending, of course, on the type of business we have, but we might have raw materials that haven't really been turned into a final product yet. We're going to have the work and process inventory, the stuff we're you know, kind of making. It's in various stages of completion. Then we got to have this um, set of inventory we called MRO, and that's the maintenance, repair, and operating materials. So these are all the things that we need to fix our machines, to keep things going. And you can imagine the variety of different things you would need for that. And then the inventory we most often think of, that's the finished goods. And of course the finished goods um, are what we're going to be using to provide them to our customers. Now when we talk about inventory, we have to think about ways to manage it. So basically there is this ABC analysis. And ABC analysis enables us to sort of categorize our inventory. Is this, is this inventory you know, worth a lot of money or worth not very much? So the ABC analysis allows us to classify our inventory as A, which would mean very high dollar value item, B, sort of in between, and C, which would be sort of an insignificant dollar value. Of note would be that A inventory items generally make up for about 80% of our dollar investment while only making up about 12% of our actual items. Conversely, C items make up about 55, 60% of our actual items while only making up for less than 10% really of our overall inventory value. So there is what's called an inverse relationship between A and C inventory items. A being very expensive items, but not very many of them, and C being very inexpensive items, but lots of them. So we use different inventory methods depending if we're talking about A, B, or C items. The next thing here we're going to talk about is shrinkage. Um, it's pretty important to note that shrinkage in inventory is, is, is expensive. And research shows us that while pilferage is an issue, poor inventory models account for between 10 and 25 percent of the shrinkage of inventory. So having good inventory models is really important. Now if you're a one-man show it's a little easier. Inventory isn't near as important but most shops aren't at one-man shows and inventory very expensive. So poor inventory methods really can cost you a lot of mo money. So like I told you, we're going to have two inventory models, EOQ and ROP. And now I'm going to talk just a little bit about each one. The first one I'll talk about will be EOQ. So the EOQ model, economic order quantity, of course the objective is to minimize holding and ordering costs. And it's based on these assumptions that demand is known and constant and independent of other decisions, that lead time is known and consistent that receipt of inventory is instantaneous and complete. In other words, when we place an order, it comes in instantly and we are never missing anything. Quantity discounts are not possible. You pay exactly the same price for every item. That's why in the EOQ model, we don't care too much about price. 
variable costs are only that of setup and placing an order. Those are the only two costs we consider. And then stockouts can be completely avoided if we place our order on time. So as I go, as I went through those, you know, rather quickly, it's important to understand that in reality, it is unlikely that all of those things will exist, but components of them will indeed exist. And knowing these assumptions enables us to much more easily kind of get a handle on how an economic order quantity might work. And then once we learn that, we can make our models a little more sophisticated. It's based on these key terms, um, annual demand being noted as big D, holding or inventory costs, that's H, shipping and ordering costs, which is S, in lead time. This model is known to be really robust, meaning um, you can change things, demand, holding costs, shipping costs, lead time, and really it doesn't change our order quantity that much. It's like, like this says, that's what being robust means. It's just a pretty tough model. Conversely, we've got the ROP model, the reorder point inventory. Here, this model is trying to tell us when to order, and ROP is what our inventory needs to drop down to to tell us that it's time to initiate an order. With ROP, we have some of the same terms, but not all the same. We have a little d, which is daily demand, versus the other is, a, is an annual demand. We still are going to be using lead time. And in this computation, we're going to be using our old friend, the z, char the z value. And in this case, we specifically are interested in the standard deviation of demand during lead time. And we'll talk a lot about that when we get into uh, computing the ROP model. Like I said, the objective of the economic order quantity is to minimize total costs. And this little model here is sort of a simplified explanation. You can notice that this gray curve is the uh, cost for holding and setup. This is just the holding costs, right? The more we have to hold or save or whatever, the more the costs go. And then the setup costs, they have sort of this curvi curvature to them. So what we're trying to do is find the cost that minimizes both of these, the holding and the setup costs. So this is the point at which we minimize uh, both of those costs. And so we'll, I'll show you how to do that in a second here with the economic order quantity model. And one more comment I'll make about this is this gray curve, this kind of is the, is the way we minimize both holding and setup costs. I mean, that's what that represents there, and that will be ultimately our economic order quantity. We know that inventory usage over time looks a little like this, again, very simplified model, but basically as time goes on, our inventory becomes lower. When we initiate the order, remember based on the assumptions, we know that it comes in when we, you know, it's instantaneous, we place our order and it appears. So that's why this jumps way up, because this graph, I kind of jumped into it, it's the relationship between time and our inventory quantity. So we get all this in, we slowly use it up over time, we place another order here, it takes a couple days to get it, and boom, it goes back up again and slowly use it over time, etc. A couple key things here is this average inventory, that's this dotted line. If we take our total Q, or economic order quantity, and we divide by two, that gives us our average inventory over time. And our maximum inventory normally is EOQ, that's that line at the top. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to, we've kind of worked our way down our handout, and I'm going to have you turn your attention to uh, the first problem there in your handout, and we're going to work through that. I'll show you how to do it. Um, it's example 12.1, where we're going to compute the economic order quantity. So you might want to get out your pencil and paper, and we'll move on to that. Okay, so now I'm going to work through some of these problems for you, and actually I just made the whole video and recorded it, but it didn't record the sound, so now um, and you're, you're going to see some of it's already written out. Um, and I hope that this goes okay, but nonetheless, uh, this is the first problem that you see here in your handout. 
and what I have done over here you can see I have copied I read through the problem I saw that I had an annual demand of 1,000 units I have um, the annual shipping cost of ten dollars and holding costs of fifty cents so I have set up then the economic order quantity model using this um, the EOQ model which I have written right here this is the EOQ model this is the one we talk about being kind of robust where we take two times our annual demand times s and we divide by h so I put those numbers in the equation and I come up with an economic order quantity of 200 which means that ordering a quantity of 200 will minimize holding and setup costs and this is also the amount that we will order and you'll note down here I've written um, that the 200 is the amount that we order to minimize ordering, ordering and holding costs and it is the amount that we will order All right, now the next part of this problem then is to compute the time between orders, the annual hold inventory costs, and holding costs. So you notice over here I've got this calculation in, which we know is the time between orders. I have it right here, in is demand over EOQ. So uh, we take 1,000, which is our big D, we divide by our EOQ we just computed, which is 200, and we're gonna get five. And this five represents the number of orders per year. So you notice I've got that written right here. It's the number of orders per, per year. Again, you know, always important to make sure that we know what our numbers mean. The second thing we want to compute is the days between orders. So we end up with the total days in the year divided by n. In this case, the problem tells us that we have 250 days in the year. So we take 250, we divide by 5, and we get 50 days between orders, which means we get an order about every month and a half. Now, the next thing it asks us to do here is to compute the annual inventory, the average annual inventory and holding costs. And actually, it only says um, annual inventory and holding costs. It really should be annual, I'm sorry, average annual inventory. We compute average annual inventory by taking Q and dividing by 2. So average, let's put here annual inventory, which I already have written there. And average annual inventory, there we go. Um, it's going to be Q divided by 2, so in this case it would be 100. If we want to switch that over to a cost, we'll then multiply it times 0.5. So in this case, it'll be $50. Now the next thing we want to do is down here for part C, we want to compute the total cost. The total cost is going to be um, this equation right here. You can see the total cost is going to be Q over 2 times H, so we already did that one, 200 divided by 2 times 0.5, and D over Q times S. So D is big D, 1,000 divided by 200 times 10, also equals 50. If we have done this correctly and we are using the economic order quantity, then this side of the equation right here will always equal this side. So in this case, we got 50 and 50, or $100 for total cost. Now on the bottom of this, problem, this page, it says EOQ is relatively robust. What happens when demand changes to 2,000? So I've rewritten it here as 2 times 2,000 times 10 divided by 0.5. And what I want you to do is compute this new EOQ at 2,000. Get this amount here. And then this will be uh, one of the Blackboard quiz questions that I have set up to go along with this video. So you could pause now and answer that question if you wanted to. Or you can you know, just move on. All right, so now we're on to quantity discounts for this next problem, problem 12.2. And it says here that assume a firm has an annual demand of 5,000 units, ordering costs are then $49, holding costs are 20% of price, and price is based on quantity purchased. So here, first thing we're going to do is compute the economic order quantity. It's exactly the same as we had done before, 2 times 5,000 times 49 divided by 1. This gives us an economic order quantity of 700. 
The only difference here is that in this problem, price um, IP is equal to H, which means that H is no longer just given to us as $5 or whatever. We have to compute it. And um, so I made a little grid here um, so you can see the prices. So in this thing here, IP is actually the same as H. So we figure out IP based on 20% of the selling price. So in the case of the $5 selling price, well then we have 0.2 times 5 is going to be 1. In the case of the $4.80 selling price, well then we've got 96 cents. And the way this works is that when we have quantity discounts, we price times demand, we get a little bit of a price break the more we buy. So in the case of this problem here, the first thing we would do then is calculate it out. And you'll notice underneath here I have the blue. So I've got 5,000 divided by 700. Let me just get rid of this pink so that you can see. So 5,000 divided by our economic order quantity multiplied times 49. And then over here we have 700 divided by 2 multiplied by 1. That is the price at the EOQ where the we're using the EOQ here. When we do that, we find out that the total cost for the year using the EOQ is 25700 But now, if we want to get a price break, we can go here to this uh, $4.80 price right there. However, in order to get that, like it says right here, we have to buy between 1,000 and 1,999. So now we drop down here. We no longer can buy 700. No, we need to buy 1,000 in order to get that price break. So this 700 here changes to 1,000. And now we're going to multiply not times 1, but times 96 cents because that's the cheaper holding cost. And over here, most importantly, we are now going to pay only $4.80 for our product as opposed to $5. So when we multiply that out, it's a substantial savings. So our total cost for the year then drops to $24,686. And in this problem, there's one more price break and that's $4.75. So we'll go over here to this next page where I did it in brown. And then I, I went ahead and I filled it in. Um, the new amount. So let's go ahead and do that together. So I erased out the numbers so I could put them back in again. All right, so now we've we got to get 2,000. So instead of um, it being 5,000 divided by economic order quantity, or in the last problem, we divided it by 1,000, we're going to now need to divide by 2,000 in order to get the discount that we want. And then up here, we're going to have 2,000 now divided by 2 because you know that's how many we're going to get in our order but now we get to uh, multiply our price here times uh, 95 cents so we get a 1 cent discount and then over here our price times annual demand we're going to have $4.75 times 5,000 so what I want you to do is calculate this amount right here and this is going to be question number two on blackboard and when you enter the number in don't use dollar signs or commas or decimals just put the number so like on the previous problem where the answer was what was it 2000 uh, let's see it was it was 24,686 then you would enter this into Blackboard as 24686. Don't put a comma, and don't put a dollar sign, and don't put decimals because it's too hard for Blackboard to like do deal with all that. So just write it 24686. Now, of course, that's not going to be the answer here, but whatever you get, just don't put any commas or decimals. And then we're going to move on to the next part of um, no, I'm sorry. Now what we're going to do is two homework problems, 1213 and 1221. All right, so now I'm going to just work um, homework problem 1213, and I'm also going to work 1221. So if you don't want to watch this, you don't have to. 
um, and you feel comfortable with the material, you can just move right on. But um, I thought I would just give you a, you know, a little extra help here. Um, so the first in this problem 1213, we have to pull out the relevant information, which is demand, the S, the shipping costs, and then holding costs. So we're going to calculate the EOQ here um, in the same way as we've done before. And you can see that once you fill in the numbers, you get the economic order quantity of 250. Once we know the economic order quantity, it's relatively easy to tell us what the average inventory per year is. It's going to be 250, then divided by 2, or 125 units. And if we wanted to convert that over to a cost, we would then just multiply that times $1.50, and we would then know that our total costs per year with respect to inventory would be 187.50 per year. The next thing to consider then in this problem is the number of orders per year and so the number of orders per year would be the total demand for the year which is 2500 divided by Q in this case which is 250 and that gives us uh, 10 orders per year. Once we have the orders per year, we can figure out the annual ordering costs, which is just going to be our 10 multiplied times uh, 1875, which of course we already know is going to be 187.50 because these two things, um, S costs or ordering costs, are always going to equal our holding costs per year whenever we order at the economic order quantity. So that works that out. So then we already know what the total cost is. It's going to just be these two things added together, 187.5 plus 187.5. And so our total cost per year is going to be $375 per year. Um, and then the last piece of this, the time between orders, is just simply going to be the working days per year, uh, which is going to be, I'm going to put this down here, E. The working days per year, which is going to be a total of 250, that was given in the problem, and we're going to divide that by 10, just like we did earlier in the when we were learning how to do this, because we have 10 orders per year. So that's going to give us about 25 orders, uh, 25 days between orders. And um, I think this part right here would be a great um, Blackboard question. Uh, excuse me, I got the wrong tool there. Let's see, we need this one right here. Yeah, um, right here. The total cost per year and um, the days between orders, but I think when I erased, when I had the wrong pen, I changed this. It should be 375, not whatever that was before, and then it's 25 days between orders. So hopefully that helps. Now I'm going to do one more problem, and that's going to be uh, a problem to illustrate quantity discounts. Alright, so here we've got problem number 1221. And we went through, we calculated the economic order quantity based on the information given to us in the problem, and we come up with 29.6 units. So first thing we need to do is calculate the total cost with no discounts. And so that's exactly what we've done here. I've got the demand divided by the economic order quantity. So the annual demand is 1,400. Economic order quantity is 29.6. We're going to multiply that times the S of 25. And then over here, um, we've got the... Uh, holding costs and over here with the holding costs we have to take um, the economic order quantity of 29.6 multiply that times 0.2 in order to find the um, actual holding cost I mean just to be clear about this uh, maybe it's better if I put it in a different order really this 400 should be over on the other side. So let's just rewrite it like this just to be clear. So it's 29.6, that's the economic order quantity, divided by 2, and then the holding costs, um, as they're computed in this problem, 
are 400 times 0.2. Might have been a little confusing set up the other way. Um, all right, so <clears throat> this is the H side, this is the S side, and um, then down here we've got P times D, so that's our price of 400, and then our annual demand of 1400. So you notice that this PD is fi 560,000, which is pretty darn high, and then these are our H costs and our uh, S costs. So the total cost at the economic order quantity then is uh, 562,366. And so, so this is problem number uh, 1221. Uh, now there's also another section here, you know you have to do, this is A, and then um, part B is if you get some more of a discount, um, then what would be the new economic order quantity? What would be the new total cost? And so you should um, go ahead then and, and compute that as well. And I'll ask um, one more uh, Blackboard question about this problem as, as well. So this is going to conclude this video. I'm going to make a separate video for the reorder point, which is going to replace the Wednesday class. This is the Monday class. And I hope that you found this easy enough to learn from and uh, palatable enough. And um, I thank you very much for your patience with me uh, missing classes. And I, and I hope you're, you're okay. All right, so we'll see you in class on Friday. Don't forget to do the Blackboard assignment. Bye.